Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, everyone. I'm Keith Boswell. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at ADHD Online. We are very excited to be doing our first uh, Working Hours webinar of the 2022. And we're thrilled today to be joined uh, by organizing the end. The other thing I want to mention, uh, at the end of the webinar, we will select 10 attendees today to give a copy of Lisa's book um, on ADHD and home organization. So be sure to stick around for the end of that. Uh, when uh, We'll post that in the chat and then we'll get uh, contact information to follow up afterwards and get you a copy of that book. So with all that, I will turn it over to Lisa. And uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Keith, thank you so much for having me. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm super honored and excited to be speaking to you today. I do have a slideshow presentation, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that. So just give me one second. Um, and then Keith, let me know if this does not work. That looks great. Why is it not playing? Play. I think if you go up to the top. There then, we go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now do you see it? Do you guys all yep. still see it? Okay, great. All right, so my name is Lisa Woodruff. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm the founder and creator of Organize 365. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Organize 365 is my podcast, and we're approaching 15 million downloads next month, which is super exciting. Uh, my mom always used to say to me, what are you doing? Writing a book? Why are you asking so many questions? And now I have written books in. I make a living from talking, which I love. Just want to let you guys know that you are in the right place if you or a family member has ADHD and you've been struggling with organization. It does not mean that there's anything wrong with you. It just means that it's time to start working with your brain instead of against it. So I have two adopted kids, both who have been diagnosed with ADHD. I went to college to become a teacher and I taught children that were at risk for having IEPs, which are individualized education plans and were on IEPs for ADHD. And along the way as a teacher and through my own kids and the special schools they ended up going to, I learned a lot about how ADHD affects the eight executive functions uh, and specifically the supports we at home and at school can put in place in order to have you work with your brain instead of against it. We're only gonna talk about six of the eight today and we're gonna start with um, these two, flexible thinking and self-monitoring. So flexible thinking is the ability to adjust to the unexpected. This is when you really struggle or have a hard time when people change things on you the last minute, or you don't want to put something in a place that is not specifically designated for this thing. So like if you are during COVID, your work came home, you had a really hard time finding a place for your work to be at home or your school to be at home. The second executive function I just wanna to touch on is self-monitoring. And this is the ability for you to evaluate what you are doing compared to what other people are doing. Sometimes you over-evaluate or under-evaluate the progress that you are making. And because of that, you end up comparing yourself a lot to other people and how far you have to go instead of looking backwards and seeing how far you have come. And I want to start by talking about these two executive functions, because whether you're diagnosed with ADHD or not, we all are having a really hard time in society right now with our flexible thinking and with our self-monitoring, because we are all full to overflowing with the amount of change, the amount of nonstop negative media, the amount of restrictions, and just Everything is so different than it has been in the last two years, and our brains are really running to just catch up with reality. So if you are feeling overwhelmed and more unsettled than you were in 2019, it is society right now. It's not just uh, the effects of your ADHD. Everyone's executive functions have been pu pushed almost to their breaking point. And what happens when that happens is that when you have a 
uh, you know, when we were all locked down two years ago for COVID, we all immediately went to what are our safety needs? What are our psychological needs? Do we have enough toilet paper? Uh, do we have a job? Do we want to work at a, an office again? Do we want to work at home? And so at home, specifically at home, not necessarily in your offices, but you saw this in your offices because of COVID, everything went down to are our safety needs being met? Are our physiological needs being met? If those needs are not being met or they feel threatened in any way, then you cannot move up to love and belonging and esteem and self-actualization. At home, I found this to be true before COVID, we in general at home are constantly working on our psychological needs and our safety needs being met. Now, let me give you a really realistic example. Let's say it's 2017 and you're like going along real well, work's going well, family's going well, you're working out, you're losing weight, everything's going just fine. And all of a sudden you get the flu for a week. It takes you out, you're sick, uh, you can't get anything done. All of a sudden the next week, maybe you're, um, you know, you're not eating as well as you were before. Uh, you have a lot of laundry to do. The, the mail has piled up and now you're kind of behind the eight ball at home. You're also behind the eight ball at work, but at work you like jump back in and maybe you have some coworkers that have helped you out and you run to get caught up at work because you don't want to let your colleagues down and you don't want to have a bad reflection on yourself at work. So you overextend yourself a little bit at work, which means that you're still recovering from that flu. And so at home, things keep getting piled up a little bit more, a little bit more. And it's just really hard to catch up at work and at home. So you often let the work slide. I like to say that there's this Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And at work, we work our ways up to love and blogging and esteem and self-actualization. And at home, it looks a lot more like shoots and ladders. Like we're climbing up the ladder and then whoops, we slid back down. And then we climb up the ladder. And it's really, really hard for any homeowner at all at home to really feel like they have the time and the freedom to work in their unique purpose. And that is the Organized 365 mission is to give you time at home so that you could do what you were uniquely created to do. How the heck are we going to do that? That's like a big, hairy, audacious goal. I have unrealistic expectations for myself and those around me, but I put all the onus of that on me as the teacher. Like, how can I create a system like I would in a classroom for you in your personal home where it's almost impossible for you not to achieve self-actualization, to have this time. How can I do that? So I have looked at these other four executive functions and I have stair-stepped them together to help you see where possibly, and no one's executive function is perfect. It doesn't matter if you're diagnosed with ADHD or not, we all need to work on these skills. Which ones are strong? Which ones are weak? And how can we stair-step those together so that we can actually have more time and enjoy our homes instead of just trying to get through unending to-do lists. Now, it all starts with working memory. As a former teacher, we would do IQ tests on the kids in our classes. And if the working memory was low, that's when we would start to refer for an ADHD diagnosis. So what is working memory? I was the middle school math teacher. I was the one that always knew there was going to be an ADHD diagnosis before there was an official diagnosis. And the reason why is because math is done in a certain order. If you skip a step in a long math equation, you get the wrong answer. And someone who struggles with working memory can skip steps, forget where they are, or miss multi-step directions. And so that's why I was able to see it in students before my colleagues were. So we at home, don't have the supports in place that we do in a school system, in a business setting. And so as an educator, as a parent of kids who needed more organizational support at home, as a professional organizer in Cincinnati, I started to try to figure out how can I create at home a more standard system that people can learn that would give them that structure and support that we would give you in school in order to support your working memory for all of the random million trillion things that we do at home. And what I created was the Sunday basket. So I'm gonna rabbit trail just a little bit and tell you how the Sunday basket came to be and my actual story. And it starts 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, I had adopted these two cute little babies. Uh, Joey was about two at the time when I invented the Sunday basket and Abby was six months old. 
these aren't my kids. This is Photoshop kids. <laughs> they were what I could put in my slideshow, just to be honest. But I was overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed because Joey was adorable as could be. He slept literally 20 minutes a day. This is my highly ADHD child. Uh, he needs like five hours of sleep at night. I need nine in case you're doing any kind of math whatsoever. That really doesn't work. So he would never take a nap. And Abby was adorable and she was the easiest baby possible as long as you held her all day long. And I was in a direct sales business. I was making phone calls. I was trying to make ends meet. Joey was highly asthmatic. I had to go to a lot of doctor's appointments for him. And I felt like I was spinning more and more and more plates. And unlike 2008 or 2020, we had plenty of income coming in. Like income wasn't the problem. The problem, I was trying to do so many things. I was trying to be a full-time stay-at-home mom while I was also running a full-time direct sales business with Downline and handling all of the medication, handling all the doctor's appointments, handling all the medications, um, everything. And I was really afraid that I was going to drop a plate and something was going to break and be irreparably damaged. But I did not know how to stop it. Like, like I was the mom, I was the homeowner, I was the leader. Like there was nothing that I could stop doing. And then there was, uh, oh, and I told you we didn't have any financial problems, but I was paying bills late and we were starting to get dinged on our, um, on our FICO score because I just couldn't find the bills to pay when they needed to be paid because they were stuck in this pile. I literally had a pile that was like 12 inches high of individual little stacked pieces of paper at the end of my kitchen counter. I was not doing a lot of things online. This was 2002. Um, I just, I just couldn't keep up. So one night, miraculously, my husband and both of the babies were asleep by 8 PM and I had some energy and I took this gigantic pile and I laid it out on my family room floor and it became 40 different actionable piles of things that needed to be done. Prescriptions to order, doctor's appointments to make, uh, invoices to pay, orders to be delivered, orders to be purchased, all these different piles. And I put those all together in different paper clips. I grabbed a basket and I put it in a basket. And then the next day, when Joey took his whopping 20 minute nap in the swing, no less, I went over to this basket. I pulled out one of the paper clipped packets of papers. It was phone calls I had to make. I called the doctors, made the doctor's appointment calls, scheduled the doctor's appointments. Joey woke up. And I was like, this is going to work. This is so going to work. I only had one of the 40 piles of paper done, but I now had a plan. I knew that I could grab something out of this basket. I could do it, check it off my to-do list instead of spending my entire 20 minutes just figuring out what it was I needed to do next. And over the last 20 years, I've refined the Sunday basket system. I've created new ways of teaching it. We've patented it, manufactured it, and we now lovingly call it our external brand. I literally have zero things in my head at any time. I write everything down on little pieces of paper, and I'll tell you why that works in a minute. So maybe this is what your kitchen counter looks like. It's the way my kitchen counter looked. Often when I teach the Sunday basket, People will say, well, I'm paperless. I don't need a Sunday basket. The Sunday basket isn't just for your pieces of paper. It's for all of those things that clutter your mind, all of the mental piles that we have, the dry cleaning that you need to pick up, the Costco order that you need to go do, the dress you need to return, the library book you need to take back, all of those physical things that go along with the mental and the paper things as well. So working memory is limited. In every human, there are only so many things you can hold in your head at one time. You may get to the point where you can hold maybe uh, eight to 10 things in your head, or you may be able to hold three to four things in your head, but you're never gonna be able to hold a 100 point bullet pointed to-do list. And we have got to stop doing this. Why are we using our brains, which are the most fantastical, magical, creative thing in the planet, to make a to-do list, it makes no sense whatsoever. The first thing I did and I do whenever I'm completely overwhelmed and it works every time is to completely brain dump all of my thoughts out onto paper and out of my head. It is amazing how much this can reduce your anxiety and your overwhelm. 
and allows you to then look at everything as independent ideas, not judgments. Like how often have you gotten all the way home and you're like, darn it, I forgot to get the milk. And what do you say to yourself? You're like, can't believe I forgot to get the milk. What kind of parent wouldn't bring milk home to their child? Like we start to associate all these negative connotations with forgetting simple things on a to-do list. But when you write these out on little pieces of paper and you're able to look at them like they're playing cards, then you can say, okay, these three things need to be done at the store. I'll do that tomorrow. These three things are bills that need to be paid. I'll put those in a bill paying pile. These two things are phone calls. And you could start to group like with like and look at them at the ta- as the tasks they are and not the judgment on your moral character. So I said before that my plates were spinning and I don't know a human on the planet that doesn't feel like they are spinning plates, like they are treading water, like they are trying to get all of these things done for two reasons. One, there's just a lot to do. And two, we're multi-passionate people. We could reduce the amount that we're doing. We don't want to. Like, <laughs> We actually like most of what we're doing. And if we could get rid of the mundane things, we would, but we're human. So we need to have like toilet paper and food and clean clothing. So we have to do the mundane things as well. Your days are filled to overflowing and you need to be able to stop that flood. The tasks the mail, the to-dos, they're not going to stop. Like if you're trying to get your to-do list done so that you have more time, it's never going to happen. It's absolutely never going to happen. You need to have a container for that information. So the second executive function that's going to work with the Sunday basket, working memory is writing all the things down. The second one is organizing. Like what is organization? Organization is putting something where it needs to go. One thing has a place. The ability to keep track of things. Isn't that what's always frustrating? Like, where did I put that? What was the thing I wanted to do? Why did I walk into this room? That is all organization. Someone who struggles with organization has a hard time putting their items away, remembering where they left items, and um, and remembering why they've walked into a, a room. How to keep track of all of those things mentally and physically. So the Sunday basket is that levy. It's the one place, the only place that you put all these notes to yourself. Because you may already have thought the way I would normally think, oh, that's great, Lisa. I'll write all that stuff down. I'll do that brain dump, like you said, and then I'll promptly forget where I put that whole list of things. Or great, that sounds even worse, Lisa. Why would I write all of these little things on individual pieces of paper, like playing cards? Like, Who wants to have 52 pieces of paper to pick up? That makes no sense. Let me just tell you, it absolutely makes sense and it totally works. If you have one place to put that information after it comes out of your brain, you are correct. It can't come out of your brain onto paper and then get lost. But if it comes out of your brain onto paper and it goes in the Sunday basket and then you follow along with the rest of the steps, it will reduce the overwhelm. It will give you more time and your brain will stop negatively talking back to you. The tasks are not going away. We're just putting them in a container and making them wait a little bit. I put this picture in here. This is a really old picture. This is all my kids' artwork when I decide to organize it. This is exactly what your Sunday basket will look like in the beginning. Don't think it's that cute little box to begin with. It's literally a couple of laundry baskets. Because we haven't had a good system up until this point, I don't want you to think that my system is a Pinterest perfect solution. And if you could just make a color coded to-do list, this will work. No, I am a functional middle school math teacher. This works. It's kind of cute in a box, but to get started, it may be a little bit overwhelming. Remember, we're trying to create a new habit of not using our working memory, which no one's working memory can remember more than 12 things, as an unending to-do list and creating a great system for capturing everything your brain wants to tell you and putting it in a safe place until later. So one central location. Now here's the only rule I have with the Sunday basket. When your brain has an idea, any idea, it doesn't matter what it is, you write it down on a piece of paper and then you ask yourself only one question. And that question is, can this wait until Sunday? We need to get milk. Can this wait until Sunday? No, we're out of milk. Great, that goes in your wallet, your purse, your backpack, you need to go get milk. I need to get a haircut. 
Can this wait until Sunday? Yes. Then it must. Then it must. You have to break yourself of the habit of doing things the minute you think of them. You're doing them the minute you think of them because you're afraid you're going to forget them. But the beauty of this system, which takes about six weeks to really become a habit, is that a lot of these things that your brain is reminding you and, and telling you about can wait until Sunday. And then on Sunday, when you look at all of the things your brain has been telling you, you then can organize and prioritize those tasks. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next uh, executive function, which I know you're already thinking like, oh, that's great. Now my brain's going to be in a box and I'm going to have to go through the box and I'm not going to want to go through the box. Nobody, nobody wants to go through the box. Nobody, not even me. Nobody wants to go through the box on Sunday. So task initiation is another one of the executive functions, and that is the ability to take action and get started. So someone who struggles with task initiation knows what to do, but they don't want to do it. That's okay. There are things that you, I'm going to reframe this for you. You have no trouble with task initiation. If I were about to say you could go do your favorite thing to do, you would have no problem with task initiation. You would already be started. Maybe you're doing it while this webinar is playing. I don't know. But if it's something you don't want to do, there's almost nothing that can make you do it, right? So reframe that in your head. Like I have task initiation issues when it's something that I don't really want to do or continuing on until it's done. So I told you I was a teacher. And the Sunday Basket is a system that Organize 365 has created. And I was a middle school math teacher, which meant that 90% of the class didn't want to come do lessons with me because they didn't want to do math lessons. So I'm well aware that you don't want to do your Sunday Basket. You don't scare me. So I created a whole Sunday Basket routine for you. And inside of that Sunday Basket routine, I created a whole club full of people. There are literally hundreds of people in our private app that spend 90 minutes on Sunday in a co-working time doing their Sunday Basket Club together. Uh, Monique is in this picture. She's right below me. She's the leader of the Sunday Basket Club. <laughs> she hides chocolate in her Sunday Basket so that every Sunday when she does her Sunday Basket, she gets chocolate. Also in this picture, these are the Organized 365 team members. Uh, you see Michelle Paradise down at the bottom. She leads the Sunday Basket Club. And we've got a couple of other faces that are not in this video. So we make it fun so that you have friends to do it with you because you know that it's easier to learn something when you have people that can help you do it. When you create this habit, it allows you to live freely Monday through Saturday, just writing down, writing down anything that your brain has to say and just taking action on things that have to happen before Sunday, which is very, very few things. And then when you get to Sunday, you'll go through all of your notes and your ideas. It will allow you to make better decisions to delete more things when they're not immediately being told to you by your brain, but read three days later on paper, delegate things to your family or to outside service services and prioritize. What's really the most important thing that you could pull out of this box to work on next? Which leads us to the last executive function that we're gonna cover today, which is called planning. I mean, did you even know that planning and organization are executive functions? Unbelievable. So planning, Planning is what everybody wants to do. Like you've probably done planning. Planning is the ability to pick out the most important things you want to do in order to get everything done. Planning is associated with productivity. So someone who struggles with planning, they don't want to make a list because they're already overwhelmed with everything that has to be done. And they don't know how to prioritize what's on the list anyway. So they just wait until everything is falling apart and then they do the most critical thing. That is not less stressful than going through a Sunday basket on Sunday. You may not want to go through a Sunday basket on Sunday, but it's a, a way less stressful way of living than finding out that something is due in five minutes and then having to reorganize your day around that. Planning is the ability to pick out the most important things to do in order to get everything done. Now, I will give you one caveat in this. Do you remember earlier I said your to-do list is never going to be done? Your to-do list is never going to be done. My to-do list was done one time in my life. It was two weeks before we adopted Abby. We knew she was coming. Her mom was overdue with her. Uh, everything was done in my house. The baseboards were painted. I was going out to our vegetable garden and weeding it every single day. The weeds couldn't even grow because I was, I was weeding it so fast. I remember walking around with 
Joey, he was 18 months holding my little finger, walking around and going, there's nothing to do. I have nothing to do. I'm totally ready. I have nothing to do. It's not a great feeling. You think you're going to love it. Do you know what you do when you have nothing to do? You create some other new big project. So it's not a thing. It's not where we're trying to get to. Our to-do lists are never ending. We bounce from one work to another, trying to get it done so that we can enjoy our life. I say baloney to that. Put the to-do list in the Sunday basket, pull out a couple of reasonable tasks you want to get done this week, and actually start enjoying your life now. There's a cycle to organization that I've identified, which is decluttering, which is emptying your brain of all the things that need to be done, organizing them in one Sunday basket. There's a lot more to the system than just putting it in a box. And then once it is organized, increasing your productivity, organizing those like tasks together and batching so you can get more done faster and choosing to do less so that you have more time to do what you're uniquely created to do. Completing and prioritizing your to-do list is the skill of productivity. Getting everything done is not what it means to be productive. Choosing what you want to do is being productive. So I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts. Organization is a learnable skill. I am a teacher and the onus of teaching something rests with the teacher, not the student. So if you are not organized after going through an organized 365 program, I take the responsibility for that. It's not that you can't learn to be organized. It's that we have not provided enough different modalities to teach that specific skill of organization. And I am a Montessori one-on-one -on -one math teacher. I taught 24 different algebra lessons before I quit my teaching job. So I will not fail at teaching the skill of organizing. Last year, we started doing research, Organized 365 started doing academic research, and we found out 86% of Americans agree with us that organization is a learnable skill. And I thought, that is so awesome. I'm so excited that so many people believe that organization is a learnable skill, and yet very few people will say that they are truly organized. I'm ready to close the gap on that in the next couple of years. So it is the consistent effort of time every single day and taking back your home that leads to an organized and productive life that writing down those notes and putting them in the Sunday basket and then every week going through your Sunday basket really starts to move you from a reactive life to a proactive life. It does not happen overnight. It's not going to be Pinterest perfect at the end. But the difference that you feel inside, the sense of peace that you have, and the grace that people tell me that they give themselves once they learn to let go of the unrealistic expectations of a perfectly organized home is priceless. If you're looking to find more time, the only way you will get more time is from organizing the work that you already have to do. And the Sunday basket will end up saving you five hours every week once it becomes a habit for you. These are all things I've already said before. So Keith, we'll get ready to start um, answering the questions. But the one thing I wanted to leave you with at the end is that we are giving away, um, I think we're giving away a total of 15 copies, Keith, of the book, because I've donated five we and got, you guys have got done 12 10. total, yeah. 12 total. 12 total. Uh, but we have a couple of free gifts for everyone also. You guys can all start making your Sunday basket on your own without the Organize 365 products by going to organize365.com slash mini course. And if you purchase the Sunday basket before Sunday and put free ADHD book audio in the notes in your order, we will send you a free audible of this book so that you can get started with that. That's awesome. So yeah, and we'll we'll uh, post a list and just a little bit in the chat of... Uh, of the people that will give the book away to thank you everyone uh, we've had a lot of comments going in the chat and we've got <laughs> some questions lined up i think the thing um lisa just from seeing the chat this really resonates with people and i think mm, you know your point about um this being a skill and not a trait i think a lot of people feel that pressure they think it's something you just are supposed to naturally get um, and I think the ADHD brain in particular, it really resonated with me. I am diagnosed combined type. And when you mentioned bouncing around from an idea to uh, that working memory for me, if I don't tackle something in the moment, I often feel like if I don't do it now, I literally will lose it. Mm 
Yeah. Um, and my wife laughs because she's like, I look like a pinball going around the, the house. So, um, yeah. So let's see. We're so gonna... can I speak to that real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So I am not diagnosed yet, although I think I'm going to sign up for your uh, thing, Keith, and see if I am. But here's I have said this for years. I personally believe that ADHD is an evolution of the mind. I do not see it as a disability at all. No. If you are using your brain to be a to-do list, it's like using a supercomputer as a calculator. It's crazy. When my brain is free of all of these niggly little things that I need to do as a human, I'm able to go, oh my gosh, well, you know what? In education, we did this. And in business, they're doing this. So in the home, we can do this. And this is how we can help homeowners. And I create um, synergies that have never been thought of before because my brain is allowed to do that. But if your brain is so bogged down in remembering that you have to put air in the tires and fill gas on the way home, like you, you can't possibly be doing both. Right, right. I mean, it makes so much sense. And I think that that pressure especially I've heard it described like the ADHD brain, like everything is on a single line. So you're just adding something else to the line. Everything feels oh, the same yes. in terms of priority. So that like, that actually like sitting down and taking the time to prioritize feels very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, all right, well, let's dive in. And I want to get to the question. So the first question that came in was uh, anonymous. It said, I have a job that allows for routine, but my husband's situation is different. His day can change day by day, which impacts my plan for the day. How do I stretch flexible thinking so it's not as stressful? So I have a great, I always have a story, Keith, by the way, and we <laughs> learn best through stories. So I always have a great yes. story. So I was an in-home professional organizer for five years in Cincinnati, and both myself and my lead organizer have children with significant needs. And so they had a lot of special school and medical things. And so we would organize our calendar to be able to go in and professionally organize people during the day. And then, you know, people would cancel the day of, and we'd be like, oh, because we needed the income, but also so many of our days were allocated for doctor's appointments. So Carol and I created this system where we held everything loosely, like doctor's appointments for our kids and, and school appointments for our kids were the only things solid on our calendar. And to this day, the only thing solid on my calendar is like this webinar with you, a live interaction with a human. Everything else on my calendar is, is held really loosely. And then we would say, okay, until we're actually inside of the house organizing, we're not actually organizing that day because you can knock on the door and be like, no. So we would always have two possible lists every single day. And until we were actually organizing, that list then moved to the next day. But if we got there and knocked on the door and they were like, no, we're not organizing, we're like, fine. Because in our car was what we needed to return and the grocery list. And we we're like, okay, plan B. And we literally would go straight to that and go straight through that list and then open up that list on the next day for a new organizing job. And I was ticked. I'll just tell you, I was in a bad mood. How could people do this for a long time? And then I finally realized, and this is the number one thing we teach, you can only control you. You can only control you. That's all you can control. So for me, I had to feel good about having two complete lists and I would start on this list. And if this one gets deferred, I just bump straight over to this one because I've got too much to do to not have time to get it done. I think we can totally all relate to that. So and I apologize. I've got someone printing behind me. Um, <laughs> so uh, the next question was from Leslie and I, this one's definitely relatable. Is ADHD and an aversion to making phone calls related? I cringe. And you talked about, well, that I think that sense of putting something off, it's mm. that avoidance of a task um, because it feels bigger than it likely will be. I think that's true for me in organization a lot of times. Yeah, I think it's it could be phone calls. It could be organizing. It could be, for me, it would be like writing an, a newsletter, which is so crazy. I'll record a podcast before I write a, like a single little newsletter. It's whatever is hard for you. And it could be related to that phone call. I'm not a therapist, although it, sometimes it sounds like I am. I'm also not a doctor. All I am is a former stay-at-home mom with a teaching degree. Just make sure you know that. Yes. Um, but for me, I don't like making phone calls because I don't want people to tell me no. And also, I'm not sure if they're going to be around. So if I take the time to call you, you better be around for me to answer. And then number three, I don't want more work coming back on me. I just want done whatever I want done. I want to move on with my life. It's unpredictable. It's other people. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally get it. So, um, all right. Well, the next question, uh, and this one's, I think uh, you 
hinted at this, so I'm sure you're ready for this one too. From Susan, this is all about organizing paper and task. What about organizing stuff? So I have a whole, a whole program called the Productive Home Solution, and I could take you from organizing your kitchen all the way to your storage room. As a teacher, step-by-step, step, 15 minutes a day, totally works. I used to start by sharing that with people. But what I found to be true in my own life, and is probably true in yours, is that you go into your closet. First of all, you don't do it in 15-minute chunks. You take the whole thing out because you're like, no, 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 that's great for other people. I'm going to be able to get through it. I'm going to empty out the whole thing. And then the dog throws up on the floor and you have to go to the vet. And now all of a sudden, all of your clothes are in your family room and your dog's in the vet. And you say to yourself, this is what I said to myself. Why did I think I could take any time for myself? I should have known that I didn't have enough time for myself. I'm already behind on this, 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 and this. So why would I think I can do this? So what I found to be true in our clients is you need to be able to take care of your to-do list, your actionables, and your plan before you start a project. What we do is like to try to make project time. And then we're like, darn it, I missed the birthday. Whereas if you take care of the birthdays, then when you're doing the project, you like, you really enjoy it. Cause you're like, yeah, I know the bills are paid. I know we have milk. I know I didn't miss a birthday and whatever. And That's then cool. if the dog throws up, you jump into that and you jump right back and you don't do the negative shaming. Yeah. I, we, that negative shaming, that negative feedback, I think that's particularly resonant to the ADHD brain because we're typically playing a lot of conversations out in our head, almost what if thing. Um, so I, I really relate. Um, all right, well, next question from Jennifer. If I struggle with multiple functions, where should I start first? So yes, when my son went to school, uh, I learned about these eight executive functions and I went up to the headmaster after and I said, um, Joey struggles with seven of the eight. And she goes, we know. And Joey's okay with me sharing that, by the way. And I said, well, where's the scaffolding for us to like build on, like to get, and she said, you know, and this Springer School and Center just worked on all of them at the same time, but it really is freeing up your brain. Like that writing things down, that working memory is the thing that will show up most often in schools that will trigger, that we probably have something going on here that may be ADHD related. You have to free your brain so that it can think. That's step one, getting everything out on paper. But then you have to go through it on Sunday. Otherwise, it only helps you for a couple of days. And then you realize you're further behind if you don't have a system for going through those ideas because your brain really does need to remind you of those. It takes about six weeks for your brain to trust that you're actually going to write it down and go through it on Sunday to stop this all the time to you. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Um, let's see, next is from Heidi. I'm curious how this might work with a high schooler and later a college student. Yep. So I have a kids program and we teach kids how to organize their bedroom, clean and organize their bedroom, but we don't call it their bedroom. We call it their mini apartment, which gives ownership. And then we have a launch program for 16 to 25 year olds, which is a binder and a beginner Sunday basket, which teaches them all these same skills of hashtag adulting without the responsibilities of like housework that are inside of, um, not housework, but like home ownership, which are inside of the productive home solution. So the kids program, yeah, we have organization from birth until, you know, a hundred. You know, I'll just, I'll, I'll do an aside when I, when we were researching you and, and we're inviting you to, to do this webinar today, I saw the different systems that you'd put to, in place and the home organizer, I was like, my wife and I have talked about for years where is the book of the house and everything? And I was like, oh my gosh, Lisa has written the book I've got to get. So thank you. Cause it's definitely in my future plans. Um, I appreciate that. Um, all right. So let's see. I'm going to, we've got another question from oh, a couple of people. Can I address the chat real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, so organized 365 is my website. You can find everything there. We've been in business 10 years and I'm a teacher and I found out People start businesses and they like have this one product and they sell it because I'm a teacher. I've been creating lesson plans, AKA courses. And stuff. There's a lot. So if you go to organize 365, the best place to start is the Sunday basket. Don't get overwhelmed. And the free ADHD download is if you buy a Sunday basket before Sunday, when you buy it through our shop, just put in their free audiobook and we will email you out the free audiobook. Great. Yeah. We'll be sure to put that in the, the notes. Um, 
so let's see um okay we had a question from harley so she asked what happens when you end up with 50 things during the week that you've put off until sunday and then can't do them all do you set a time limit for doing the task how do you prioritize these items so you remember how many times i said you're not going to finish your to-do list just because you write it down and put it in the sunday basket does not mean it's magically going to get done it's not a magic basket it's a <laughs> sunday basket and that's why i say it takes six weeks because it takes six weeks for you to truly understand how many roles and responsibilities, tasks, dreams, hopes, ambitions, people who are giving you tasks to do. You're living a completely reactive life. That's why you feel like a hamster on a treadmill. And after six weeks of doing this and not spending 90 minutes, spending you know three hours, four hours on Sunday, finally, you will say enough, enough. I can't volunteer at this thing. I'm not going to write that book. I'm not going to do this thing. And you'll start to say, you know what? We're not going to change cable providers. I, I'm fine. It's, it's not worth this much. That's going to go. That's going to go. And you naturally will start to say some of these things have got to go so that I could do things that are more important. But until your brain becomes a physical thing in front of you that you can actually move around, it's harder to realize how many things you're doing. Right. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, what, yeah, sometimes when you, when you put them all down and you kind of see it all, you're like, no wonder I was stressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, Michelle had a question. What were the three things in that cycle picture? Decluttering, organizing, and? Increasing productivity. So this, I, I have so many things to share, Keith. I could talk for hours. Um, mm -hmm. Here's what I found with people. You get the Marie Kondo book. You do your closet, you feel like a boss, and then you can't figure out why the rest of the house doesn't work. And it's because Marie Kondo is a declutterer. She's great at decluttering. And these decluttering challenges, you do them on a weekend. It's the spring, you guys. There are going to be 8,000 of them these free weekend. Take back your house. You'll declutter like crazy, and you will feel awesome. And then you will get to May, and you'll be like, why am I so overwhelmed? And it's because there's so much to do in May, and decluttering gives you like an initial high of decluttering. And then so in May, you'll try to get that back. And you'll go to declutter and there's really nothing left to declutter. So then you will over declutter. This is why people get rid of things they actually need uh, because they're trying to get that high from that weekend of decluttering. And what's true is once you are decluttered, then you need to organize. Like I told you to write down all these things. Once you write down everything, we're actually gonna put them in a whole bunch of different slash pockets. That's what you're gonna be learning in that six weeks when you first start of taking back your paper. And you're only gonna focus on these the first week. What has to be done this week? What has to be done on your calendar and computer? What errands do you have this week? What's going on with your money? And what are you waiting for? And after you get through that, then you start looking at like, okay, well, what's going on in my personal, my home, my family, our finances, you start to get more granular. This is the act of organizing. Organizing always, always, always happens analog, not digitally. Increasing productivity, make it an app, make it a Google doc. I don't care, like do whatever you want. That is when you increase productivity and almost everything on the market is decluttering and then making it digital and increasing productivity. I am in the middle. I teach you what to do after you've gotten rid of this before you wanna make it like some super thing on your phone. How do you become organized? What is that process? That's where the Sunday basket is. That's great. All right. Uh, let's see. Amy had a question. What do we, uh, how might we win the book? So if you're still sticking around, we're going to post that in just a few minutes in the chat. Um, so um, yeah, that we'll, we'll be giving that away in just a second. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, one of the things people are talking about a lot is the pressure they feel that, that feeling when it starts feeling chronic and frustrating and, you know, what, what do you recommend? I mean, what's a good release? I mean, besides writing it down, like what, and I know writing it down helps. It does for me, but do you have advice? What is a release for when you feel overwhelmed? Yeah. Or even, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, just, I think a lot of people don't give themselves grace in those moments. Mm -hmm. We're our own worst critic. And so, we take those moments and we beat ourselves up and we, we really make it personal. I'm not, you know, I'm not a good person. I'm not good at this. So yeah, personally, I found through observation again, remember just stay at home mom teacher. Yep. It takes about 18 months for you to mentally 
uh, change your thought patterns and then about 18 months for you to see that manifest in reality. So if you think back on getting out of debt or losing weight or getting organized, those are usually the three that people want to do as their New Year's resolutions. Usually think about it a long time before you take any kind of action and then move forward into that. And then when you start to take action, you start to walk and eat better. It's not like you immediately become your ideal weight. It usually takes about 18 months to do that. And that's typically what we see in the organized 365 community. Okay, over in the chat, <laughs> I'm Lisa Woodruff. The company is Organized 365. The book is called How ADHD Affects Home Organization. Apparently, there's no place to put a code in on our website, which does not surprise me because I'm probably ADHD. So you could just email customer service at organized365.com. They know you're going to want the free audiobook. They'll just check to make sure you made the purchase and then they'll give you the free audiobook. I'm also going to have my, um, my team just go through any single Sunday basket that was purchased today or tomorrow and send out the free uh, book. So you could just purchase and they'll send you the free book by email. Great. Um, here's a question from Lindsay. Do you know how to find a local professional organizer that has experience? I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a certification program that goes with our Sunday basket. We have over 100 licensed certified organizers all over the United States who have small groups that will help you one-on-one -on -one or in small groups in person or online, get your Sunday basket started if the bigger Sunday basket club is too much. And then there's online training. Um, there's a, a booklet that comes out in the physical package that comes out. There are online videos on demand. There's an app support group. We have hashtag all of the things that you would have in a school we have for this. Great. All right. Uh, let's see. We had another question from Jerry. What about prioritizing challenges as we think it's all important? So challenges. Um, Oh, prioritizing challenges. Right. So on Sunday, you're going to look at what has to be done before. You're going to keep asking the same question. Can this wait until Sunday? So on Sunday, when you go through all of your things, can I wait till Sunday? Can I wait? You're going to ask it again. And you're going to keep delaying every single thing you can until next Sunday because there's so little that you can get done during the week. So if it's like get a haircut and you're like, you know what? It's looking pretty good. Yep. Can wait till next Sunday. Can wait till next Sunday. And you're going to keep delaying that. That's why I like change cable providers. Yeah, it can wait. It can wait. And then you'll get down to the amount that can't wait. Sometimes there's not enough time to get everything done that can't wait. That's when you stay up late. That's when you uh, at the last minute have to cancel things. That will stop happening about six to eight weeks in, depending on how overcommitted you are now. Then you'll be able to say like, okay, I can get done what has to get done. What one thing that can wait do I want to pull into this week? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, here's something that came in anonymously. So basket or not, the sight of those papers stresses me out. How long yep. does it take for that gut reaction to go away? Smiley face. <laughs> so when you have, this is, this is when it happens because the Wednesday podcast episode every week is a success story from someone in our audience. And I always ask this question, when did you finally feel when did you finally know the organization was working? And almost every single time it was when my spouse called me and asked me for a specific paper and I was not home and I was able to say, go here, get this, do this. And they were able to, you know, renew the tags of the, of the car. They were able to sell the thing. They were able to find the medication for the kid when they were able to identify something at home that was organized when they were not at home for someone who was at home and they didn't have to turn the car around and go back and hunt for it themselves because they didn't know where it was. That's usually when you're like, okay, it's gonna take longer to get this done, but at least I know that what I'm doing is starting to work. It's like when you've been walking for weeks and you've been eating salads and you've like lost half a pound and you're like, what the heck? Like how long is right. this gonna take? And then all of a sudden you see one more pound go down. You're like, all right, all right. I can eat another salad. I can eat another salad. And you got to remind yourself that you didn't get disorganized overnight, right. but it's not going to take forever. I like to say, Bill Gates says we overestimate what we can do one year in business and underestimate what we can do in 10 years. I like to say we overestimate what we can do in one weekend of decluttering and we underestimate what we can do in one year of getting organized 15 minutes a day. It's I, That resonates so much with me. I, the number of times I've said, this weekend, I'm changing my life. 
<laughs> and, you know, I'm just going to come in here like the Tasmanian devil and get it all done somehow <laughs> that I've never been able to do. But this weekend yeah. will be the weekend. Right. Totally get it. Um, here's another great question. I think this is one a lot of people can relate to as well from Crystal. How do I use the Sunday basket if I'm the only person in the house who wants to organize? Uh, the Sunday basket is only for you. No one's allowed to touch your Sunday basket. So my spouse and I have separate Sunday baskets. Our kids have separate, like this, the Sunday basket is, it's your external brain. Do you want people in your brain? No, there, there's enough talk <laughs> going on in there. This is for you. You can have a slash pocket about things you wanna talk to other people in your family about. Your family members will definitely put things in your Sunday basket for your attention. If you have kids, they'll start to write you little notes. Kids figure this out super fast. They're like, oh, if I want cookies and I write cookies in there, sometimes I get cookies or like I need new batteries for my whatever. And they start to realize that, oh, I put these things here and then my wishes will get granted. But no one's allowed to take things out of your Sunday basket because you don't want people taking things out of your brain. That makes, I like that. And then it makes it personal and it doesn't put the pressure yes. on everyone else. Yes. Um, you can do it for yourself. It's a great place to start. Um, we had a question from Nicole asking about uh, taking on a big organization project. I know you mentioned you've got another thing about that. So maybe we'll look at doing a project-based organization for right. ADHD as a future webinar. But um, just in the interest of time and, and staying on topic, we'll, we'll keep it this. So um, there was another question about working efficiently. And I'm wondering your thoughts on how to apply this thinking at work or how it fits in to work because it may seem like it's more personal, but it mm -hmm. seems like it would fit. So the Sunday basket has a friend called the Friday work box works exactly the same in work. Only there's a little bit more to it because there's a little bit more um, that goes into business. Same exact slash pockets, same box. It just says Friday work box on it. Same rule. So if it can wait until Friday, it must wait until Friday. And then every Friday from two to the end of your day, you take everything out of the Friday work box, put it in the correct folders, go through your email, follow up on everything. And you may say, oh my gosh, I don't have three hours at the end of Friday. Yeah, I know, nobody does. But the companies that follow our philosophy, including our own, have put this into effect. The workday actually ends around two on Friday. And then we email each other back and forth, update our agendas, make sure that we finish everything and look and set up our Monday for success and get everything we ready, get ready for the next week on Friday so we can leave the end of the day on Friday with our brain totally ready to head on into the home. And it doesn't have to be the Friday box. It doesn't have to be Sunday. Those are days that work for me. You could do the Sunday basket on Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. It is super, super helpful if you pick the same day and the same time every week, because if you don't, then you're less likely to actually make it a habit. That routine, yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. All right, great. What, uh, let's see, we had a question from Cindy. Do you have any tips on task in initiation? One of the biggest reasons I've struggled in college is not being willing to start the uninteresting or overwhelming assignments. Mm -hmm. I've heard setting a timer for five minutes and then another five helps. Just wondering from your perspective. Yes. Um, find out why you would want to do it. So if you are a person that likes people, then do the Sunday basket together in the club or with a bestie. If you are a person that, uh, you know, wants to binge watch Netflix, then do the Sunday basket, then be able to binge watch Netflix. Like put it before whatever you need to do and then be like, I need to take my medicine and then I could do this. And it's not like the Sunday basket is terrible, but it's, it's not the most enjoyable thing. That's why these things aren't getting done at home. And then the bottom line is it's hashtag adulting people. Like we don't like doing everything we have to do and not doing it isn't giving you a better life. So doing it, you see what I'm saying? Like right. both of them are not great. So just be like, great. This is what it's going to have to be. Hide chocolate in there. I don't know. Have your favorite movie on while you do it whatever makes you most happy, but either way, not doing it is not serving you. Yeah, I, it's true. And it's like that putting it off only builds the pressure. So yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. So um, it's kind of very similar, um, but uh, Windron asked, I struggle with prioritizing process. I find it hard to make a list that doesn't end up with almost everything being starred as high priority. Yep. And then things have multiple steps in order to finish and I get lost on them. Ideas? We take on too much. We just take on too much. Like, yeah, 
Right. Mine too. And when I get to that point and I did it last night for two hours, I went through all of the ideas and all the lists because today I have so much going on at work and I kept rewriting the lists and doing the things and rewriting the list until I got down to what I could do today. And then before I went to bed last night, I said to myself, okay, you have to make your list, Lisa. And this is how I made my list by time. And I was like, okay, at 10 o'clock, I have this meeting, 12 o'clock, 30 is the closing, 1.30 is a meeting, 2.30 is the webinar with you. So I looked at my to-do list and I was like, realistically, I can write my newsletter and I can prepare the slides for this presentation. And there's nothing else I can actually do today. There's no more time. Like I'm out of time. And sometimes you're, to be honest, I canceled an event this week. Uh, we made some really big decisions in Organize 365 because we were overcommitted and our whole team was spinning. I was like, great, we're not doing this. We're pushing this project. We're not doing this. Like I canceled so much stuff. It's hard. I mean, I had team members working out. We had products in process and I canceled them because we can't do it all. You mm -hmm. have to make the hard decisions. You're the only person that can take it off your list. And, you know, and it's, I think it's, it's an interesting balance because I think at least for me personally, it's like sometimes when I do finally let it go, the, that easing of the pressure that I didn't expect is yes. so wonderful. Or just saying, I can get to this later. Yeah. Um, it, it allows for some mental space that I didn't have before. Go ahead. So I, I, have, a, I have a good thing. I think this will be a good thing to end on. In 2012, I quit my job in December of 2011, started Organize 365 January of 2012. I named it Organize 365 because I understood enough about SEO, search engine optimization, that if you searched organization, I would come up if I blogged long enough. That's why I wanted to do blog. No idea what I was going to do, how this was going to be a business. I was overweight. I was depressed. The house was a mess. We were in the worst financial straits we'd ever been in. Did you notice I quit my job? Like it makes no sense whatsoever. So I got started and I started decluttering my house and getting it organized. And I was so mad at myself. I mean, I was sick because I was decluttering stuff that costs good money that I never finished. And I was broke, like I was broke. And I was like, Lisa, you do this all the time. You buy all this stuff for all these projects and you buy every single thing that goes with the project and then you put it on a to-do list and then you don't do it. And now you're just going to get rid of it and you could use the money and no one will buy it from you because it's worthless because it's from 10 years ago. And I, about halfway through that year, I got to the summer and I was like, okay, I, I clearly need a new rule. So here is my new rule. And I call it the 24 hour rule. And the 24 hour rule is if I do not want to start this project, this book, this whatever it is, within 24 hours, I'm not allowed to buy it. And the reason why is because I will buy it and then I will get it and then the energy will have gone and then I'll be like, eh, and then I won't do it. I got to the point where I was like, if I'm not ready to start playing an audiobook, I'm not allowed to use a credit on an audiobook because I'm like, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then the next day I'm like, mm, not really that interested. Okay. Right. Again, and so the 24 hour rule is if you cannot take action within 24 hours, don't even start it because that's how you got to this place to begin with. I love that. I, it, it really does. It makes so much sense. And I think it's like, I, I just think the, the, the easing the mental pressure, we need it more. And I think we're, to your point, we're the only ones that can do it for ourselves. So um, this is yeah. great. Well, um, I know, I think we have posted, I'm not sure yet if we've posted the winners in the chat, but we have got 12 that we're going to be giving uh, that away to. Um, any other advice, Lisa, or anything else you'd like to call out about Organize 365? Just, I saw somebody in the comments down below say something about grace. It was probably six or seven years into Organize 365 when I started asking people um, about their transformation from being disorganized to organized, how that felt and, uh, what they got out of it. And I started hearing this grace all the time. I'd never used that word before in podcasts or whatever. And they're like, oh yeah, you give us grace. We feel grace. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, well, you know, we have so much shame over not being organized or not getting it done in a weekend or having to have it Pinterest perfect. And you just keep showing us that you only do dishes twice a week. I do like there's always dirty dishes at my house because no one else does them. So I've just decided I'm only doing them twice a week. And I show that on Instagram and they're like, you are organized and 
but yet you show us it doesn't have to be perfect. And so because you're not perfect and you're organized, we are allowed to do it. And because you step-by-step step teach us how to do it a little bit at a time, one program at a time, and they all go together, we give ourselves the grace to have the time to learn the skill. And I was like, and just think about your favorite teacher. Like my fourth grade teacher was my favorite teacher. She made learning fun. Like you wanted to learn everything in there. You wanted to do your best for her. Completely. She never condemned you. I'm a teacher. Like, yeah, I have a business. I'm a CEO, blah, blah, blah. But I'm a teacher. Like I'm teaching the skill of organizing. And the thing that warms my heart the most is people learning the skill. So if you learn by books, I have books. If you learn by videos, I have videos. If you learn by listening, I have podcasts. If you learn by interaction, I do webinars. Like, how do you learn? I will show up, just get in the organized 365 community and I will love on you. And I, I believe, I know you can be organized. The fact that you're not organized now is not on you. It is on the organization industry for not teaching you in a way that you can learn. And I will spend the next 30 years teaching you so that you can learn. I, that's really powerful words. And, you know, we, I, there were a number of questions that we were not able to answer. Um, we really appreciate everyone uh, asking. Uh, we will, we'd love to do this again with you, Lisa, yeah. because this, our audience clearly, uh, this is a topic of high interest and high demand. Um, so thank you very much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone that sat with us for the hour. Uh, we'll be following up with all the winners of the book and get you those. And uh, we'll be posting a recording on the website probably within about a week or sooner. And everyone that was on the, the list will get a link to that recording so you can watch it again later. But Lisa, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to talking with you again soon. Keith, thank you too. And thank you, everyone. If you have any questions um, about what we, ans we asked, you can email customer service at Organize365 and they will help you as well. I just wanted to um, say to the winners, we just posted this on the chat and I'm just gonna post them again. And we will send all of you an email so you can send us your address and we'll make sure to mail you that book. Yep. Thank you so much. Yep, thanks so much everyone. We look forward to seeing you again soon.